What's up, YouTube? What's up, Facebook? What's up, world? Um, Matthew here again. My Facebook is Matthew Harrison. Uh, my YouTube is By Storm Distribution. My Instagram is um, is uh, Storm Grabber. And I just wanted to make a part two video because earlier I made a video and it wasn't an attack on anyone. It was, it was actually more of an aid for anyone that deals with the enemies in their life, whether of a spiritual nature or of a human nature. And that's not an attack on anyone, but unfortunately there are people in this world who choose to be evil towards people who are not trying to be evil or be evil towards other people or be evil at all. And the whole, basically I, the whole 20 minutes or 16 minutes, whatever I made of that video talked about something other than the, and excuse me while I break, break bread, praise God, hallelujah. I hope that you eat and drink healthy today and blessed and purified and cleansed and, and all the above. So the first part of the video, part one, was um was um was uh was basically about um was basically about going through different stages in life and um and, 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 and that there's times where you're climbing and there's times where you're, where you're, um, you know, you're in situations where you're, you're, you have to, I can't speak for other people's life, but for my walk with God and Jesus Christ and my salvation is, um, is basically I get in situations I'm, I get into situations where um, I know I'm doing the right thing and I can't say this is for every Christian's life but I mean from my, what happens is I know I'm doing the right thing and there's still evil going on around me and um, basically Number one thing that I would say is trust God, seek God, have faith. Love conquers all. Continue to be loving. Don't single out specific humans. Just keep being truthful, being confident. Do what you got to do. Say what you got to say. Don't seek revenge. Don't be violent. Don't cuss. Don't be crazy. Just continue to love people and God will walk you through it and you'll see that God's promise in God's life, God's promise for your life is more than any evil human being or evil demon can do towards you. Unless you're suicidal and trying to kill yourself. And, um, so, so the first, if you want to go check out the first part of the video, it's a whole nother video. I only intended it for to be one, but the reason I decided to make it into two is because, um, is because it's so easy to be taken by revenge as a Christian. And it's so easy for me, no matter, okay, so I don't, I've never been a witch. I'm not affiliated with any witch groups or circles or covens or anything like that. But the truth of the matter is so much of witchcraft and Satanism and evil is consumed by revenge and by getting back. And 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 it usually is I mean, so that being said, um, that being said, the Bible teaches us as children of God, as Christians, that don't be taken by revenge and, and God will have vengeance. 
And my, the goal of my videos, these two videos, is to help anyone out in the world who they know they're saved. They know they're a Christian. But if you actually study literature and study the scriptures, you'll see that the Old Testament is very different than the New Testament. God, God gave the Hebrews and Moses the Ten Commandments. Originally, he designed the Garden of Eden, uh, the, the, the world. And then after that, there was someone who told the other people that, see, at first, if you read Genesis, it says God created every fruit and seed-bearing plant and tree and all that. So how could there possibly be one tree that we're not supposed to eat or drink from or anything? And later on in Genesis, depending on what translation you read, it says the Lord. And it also says he forbid one tree and one, um, one tree and one, uh, for the knowledge of good and evil. Now, what that says to me is don't not trying to contradict God. Is not trying to say God doesn't know what he's doing. It's saying that we were a few generations into the world and at this point evil was present, whether from man, Satan, it was not from God. We can't blame God for evil. And whatever type of possession or spirit or, or, or cursing or anything that it was, it infiltrated laws about what trees and what fruit we were allowed to eat and use and drink. And that being said, shows that one of the original evils is men and women telling each other how to live and how to and setting rules for each other and that's not an attack on the police that's not an attack on the government it's an attack on any human being because yeah, i mean police are called it's a it's a government system it's it's, the, it's it is what it is but for me to walk out into the world and have an accusing attitude toward another human being is the very root of of satanism and also the very root of christianity is pull the plank out of your own eye before pulling the sprinter out of your brothers. Focus on your own sin. No one can be brought to God except God bringing them to God. So, the root of Christianity is focusing on your own sin and, and, and living your own righteous life. And the root of Satan, one of the roots of Satanism is being accusing. And, and so, so, Basically, if you can walk in your life enjoying what you have and enjoying your 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 plot and your lot Excuse me. So sorry and what your life is and how's it how it's going It is such a more peaceful and loving walk Than being accusing or or unnecessarily violent or or accusing towards people because there's different situations in life where you have to tell the truth and, um, and sometimes it involves other people. Hey, was this manager a good manager? No. I don't want to gossip. I don't want to snitch. I don't want to start problems. But if someone came to me and said, hey, truth be told, were they a good manager? Blah, blah, blah. You, it would probably be best for you to say no because it will probably result in a fix. Or you could say, I don't want to be involved. But it's not the same is going in in the morning and being like, oh, I'm going to make this person a target. Or I'm going to make, you know, I'm going to, every time that person goes behind the the corner, I'm going to constantly make them look bad. Or, or, or do this or do that. It's not the same. So, all that aside, what revenge used to be to me was violence or destruction if someone wronged me i was the when i was a teenager when i was young i knew perfectly well i knew perfectly well 
what was right and wrong in terms of lying and stealing. I lied to my family about being high because I knew it would get me kicked out. And I, and I, and, and I knew not to steal because I was raised by Southsiders for the most part, uh, as a young man in terms of the streets and prison and, and we, they, I was taught not to steal. Don't steal from other gangs. Don't steal from other people. It was just one of the rules in the, in the, from the gang members that I respected and brought me up. It was don't steal. And it, luckily for me, it coincides with one of God's laws. Now, obviously me lying to my family does not coincide with God's laws. And I learned as a young man that I had to stop doing that. And that's a whole nother story that's irrelevant. But what is relevant is I, at age 29, I got to a point where I was tired of taking crap from the world to the point where I felt like a coward. And it was more important for me before God to not be a coward than to just sit there. I basically got put in a position because Satan will will take scriptures and use them against each against themselves. Satan will use scriptures and, and try to make you feel right. I mean, he Satan does it to to Jesus Christ. When Jesus is in the wilderness, Satan approaches him and he literally uses scriptures to try to convince um, to try to convince uh, Jesus Christ to, to worship Satan himself, Satan, which obviously Jesus is not going to do. So, if you're battling demons in your mind or in your life or whatever, and you feel these demons trying to use the Bible against it, it it's no, it's not uncommon. It's a real tactic that demons and evil and Satan uses. So, you have to know what your judgment is what the truth is and what what you believe what your goal is and then if you know that you should be backing off and minding your own business and 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 um backing off and minding your own business and continuing on but you hear some scripture saying you know you hear something in your mind saying, oh, you must do this, you must do that. No, that's not, that, 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 don't allow Satan and demons to take you off of God's course for your day or for your life by using scripture against you, okay? So, once you get past that and you're actually living in salvation and you're not I had to get over, I got to a point where I was done with revenge, whether that meant trying to hunt people down who stole from me or wronged me, or whether it was get back by smashing their door like they smashed mine, whatever it was, I had to get past that and realize that vengeance is God's, and he, and he teaches us that in the Bible, through his prophets, and in the Old Testament, and and. and and, it, and what that said, and I, I got into situations that normally I would want sweet, sweet revenge right then and there to redeem my reputation, redeem my pride, uh, redeem my confidence. I don't get taken by pride very often, but um, I couldn't, I needed to recognize that vengeance is God's. And, and what the main idea of this video is, is that you, you got to see at the end of the day. Okay, so the New Testament teaches us when to pray. Um, if you feel like praying, pray, pray. Don't ever let someone stop you praying unless it's like, oh, you need to have your eyes on the road or whatever. But don't ever let someone guilt trip you about praying. Or the only thing the Bible teaches is one thing that the Bible teaches is that it disappoints God for us to pray for our enemy's death. So that's not, I wouldn't recommend that, but sometimes you just, if you don't know what to pray, pray in the spirit, pray, just imagine the Holy Spirit coming over your body, filling your body and pray for whatever it is is happening. Don't ever be afraid to do that. Now, going from Paul's teaching and the letters to the churches, 
when he teaches us to pray in the spirit and never cease in prayer, you go to Jesus's books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which are actually written after Paul's books, according to history, according to certain historians I've listened to, which speaks a lot there. And, and he teaches us first to pray in private and to pray, pray the Lord's prayer. But later on, Jesus goes to pray on top of the mountains with other disciples. And he also tells us to pray for those who persecute us. So, and he also teaches us don't be like the hypocrites trying to make everyone see us pray. So what you can gather from all that is Paul was the, Paul's letters to the churches, according to some historians, were the closest to actual Jesus's actual life. And what ta Paul teaches us is pray in the spirit and don't cease praying doesn't say pray for your enemies it doesn't I mean it, it does say stuff like that I'm sure but and then when you jump back to Jesus's actual life documented by the disciples which apparently were actually written after Paul's books which raises tons of questions Jesus teaches us don't be out in public trying to make sure people are seeing it basically teaches you don't make it private between you and God don't make it a stop look at me i'm praying like don't make it a, a, a hypocritical attention gathering act but if you feel in your heart and spirit that you want to or need to pray don't let any other human being or anything besides good intention if you feel like it's better for you to take a break from prayer and maybe fast or or or, or speak or worship god or whatever or just walk in christ or walk in yourself that is what you should do but don't let guilt trips and demons and delusions um trick you into oh don't pray don't you know break your connection with god don't speak with god don't communicate with god so as a christian trying to live the most happy productive life for me the easiest thing to get swallowed by is the rest of the world i, I mean I, i've got a bed i've got a shower i've got the things that i like in life i've got you know i have a good life i have money i have life life is good but then someone cuts me off okay well i'm gonna pray for them i'm gonna rebuke those demons that ever caused that problem and i'm gonna and i'm gonna pray for them okay so by the time that i rebuke and cast away these demons into the lake of fire that just cut me off and caused me to go insane or mad i'm going to then pray for this human being whether they were possessed or using demons or unaware whatever it was and that's what the bible teaches me to do but what you have to do as a Christian is stop yourself. Excuse me, what I find to be the most productive for my happiness and for my emotions and my walk with God is as soon as you're aware enough to realize that you're praying and casting out demons, you need to go to the next scripture. And the next scripture is don't is that vengeance is God's. And also, it, it teaches in the New Testament that the that it's better for us to let the demons build themselves up and God to cast them away uh, which is the which would be the reapers the angels and what Jesus's final teaching on that subject to the best of my knowledge is pray for more angels so you you if, if it, the best thing to do is to look at what happens get past it do the right thing and be loving, be forgiving, and walk in Christ. Be confident in Christ. Bring all your thoughts captive to Christ. Don't think about how it's going to come back to him. Don't think about God is the one who takes care of that. Don't think about how you need to get back to him. Don't think about how you need to say something evil or or, or trick them or they're going to be tricked. No. You, you, you immediately go to love, go to confidence, and go to Christ. And continue on your path. If you need to get away from that person, get away from that person. If you need to pray for that person, pray for that person. But once you realize you're doing it as an act of revenge because of what they did to you, let it go or you will get stuck. You will get, and there's nothing wrong getting stuck in prayer. Prayer and worship is a good thing to get stuck in. But the wiser you get and the more mature you get is really showing God that you trust him and have faith in him. Because if God is commanding us to put our problems on him in the morning with a single prayer and to only pray for those who persecute us and to not and to trust him to avenge us and to take revenge in his hands then why would we sit there in public 
praying for our enemies when God tells us, pray in the morning, pray alone, pray in private when you can, trust God, have faith. So if you are being persecuted so heavily that you feel the need to pray or cast away demons, do it. Because God tells you, Jesus teaches us, as soon as these demons cause us to sin, our body, our church, our temple, then we are commanded, we are we are instructed by God to cast them into hell for eternity. He says it's better to cut off part of your body and cast it into the fire than let it bring your whole body into hell. Now, however you want to interpret that, if you actually cut off one of your limbs or, or gouge your eyes, or if you think of it as, hey, this is my body, my church, my temple, the members of my body, as soon as there's something causing me to sin, doesn't mean you, you openly rebuke a person or yell to them that they're a demon, but you take the situation and you cast those demons into hell and um, and you move on. Now, if you're doing that as an act of revenge, you need to stop yourself and realize the next scriptures that Jesus teaches us is, is to, to allow the wicked to build themselves up so God can reap them. So if you're still in a state of confusion or mistrust or, or discomfort or persecution and you, and you realize, okay, me praying for them is an act of vengeance. I don't need to do it or revenge. Me rebuking demons and casting out demons is an act of revenge. I need to trust and faith and know that God sees what happens. God is my protector and my provider. Um, God, don't think that God, that we need to play God for other people or tell God what to do for us when we've already come before him as his children, as his, as his, as our creator he is to us then pray for angels. The next, the last thing that God teaches us is pray for more angels into the field, more workers into the field to reap the, the, the chaff. So it's a really, really interesting topic that isn't necessarily blatantly pointed out in the Bible, but it's so easy to be taken by revenge. And revenge, if unless you go and, and beat someone up or break it, someone's stuff up, destroy something that happened to you, equal you're not going to just be satisfied by it. And what I learned in life is that even when you seek those routes, the, the routes that God teaches us not to take, you actually have more suffering and more problems in the future than trusting God to avenge you and walking away without being taken by any sort of revenge, whether that's prayer, rebuking, casting out, speaking out, um, acting a certain way, you know, they're acts of revenge and although that we use them as tools of warfare once it becomes revenge you you let it go and and you um you let it go and you trust god and you have faith in god and you check yourself you check your walk you check your happiness because your happiness is is coming from the holy spirit and from god so as soon as you get caught up in revenge and, and evil you're, 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 it's so easy to sacrifice your happiness and, and be caught up in these personal vendettas. And, and that's like, so, such a, it's such an easy battle to win, but it's also such an easy battle to become obsessed and burdened and plagued by. So praise God, hallelujah. Please leave comments, subscribe, questions, anything of the sort. Hopefully you got the, under, the, the intention and the understanding of the video. And uh, I hope you have a good life and a good day. And uh, 